After the capture of Prince Rygar for his attempt to kill the princess and the king, Princess Lexia is worried that someone more powerful than Yuya exists. Luna, on the other hand, remains optimistic. She states that the important thing remains that the princess wasn't hurt. Yuya, however, continues to be plagued by the thought of the evil girl who have proven to be much of a challenge to him. The thought of her keeps him worried. While they are lost in thought, the captain of the guards comes to inform them about the discussion on how Prince Rygar should be dealt with. He informs Yuya that he is also invited to the hearing. Looking at the princess for approval, she nods in agreement. This causes him to accept the invitation. After that, they all head to the throne room and the princess is left bothered about what could be the possible penalty for her brother's actions. In the throne room, the prince continues to demand that he be freed. His current state leaves the king extremely disappointed in him. The prince, however, continues to demand that the guards unhand him, and this eventually leads to the tearing of his clothes, revealing all the scars and injuries on his body. Seeing this, everyone is shocked. When Prince Rygar realizes that his father is shocked at the sight of him, he seeks to know why the king has averted his eyes from him. Also, he asks Princess Lexia why she has a strange look in her eyes. He sees this as a look of pity and this gets him angry. After that, he inquires about whose fault it is that he turned out this way. Answering his own question he reveals that he became like this because he got caught up in this when Princess Lexia lost control of her magic. This doesn't seem like a valid excuse to the king, who feels that the prince's wound should have healed by now. In agreement, the prince states that the wound he sustained did heal cleanly once, but he ended up getting mad. He blames it on being showered with Princess Lexia's tremendous magical energy, which felt like a wave of insanity rushed into him. Furthermore, this led to a surge of destruction in him. Due to this, he claims the only way to suppress the urge he felt was to inflict the destruction upon his own body. All of this has led him to become this way. He accuses his father for knowing of his sufferings and doing absolutely nothing about it. To this, his father disagrees, claiming that his predicament could be likened to a curse. This had led him to do the only thing he could, which was nothing. This doesn't still serve as a reasonable excuse for Prince Rygar who feels his father could do better than isolating him. He informs his sister that since he was removed from the palace, he has lost the ability to restrain his destructive impulses towards her. This had led him to be extremely desperate to kill her. Referring to himself as being hideous and mad, he had ended up being regarded as a first prince unfit for public view. Apparently, his existence was erased from the royal family and he wasn't even treated as a human. All of this served as a living he for him, which he found so hard to comprehend. Hearing him say all this, Yuya is reminded of a glimpse of his past which is likened to the prince's experience. Meanwhile, the prince decides that there is no point in living any longer and demands that they kill him quickly. All that has happened to him makes him not want to live for a moment more. After saying this, everyone in the throne room is silent. At this moment, Yuya raises his hand, demanding permission to speak. When the king sees him he asks Yuya to stay out of this since he is an outsider. In response, Yuya states that he doesn't wish to speak but only wants to try something out. Just then, he opens a magic portal and brings out a bottle of green liquid. After that, he walks up to the prince, who gets scared, demanding to know what Yuya has in his hand. While Yuya doesn't give a definite answer, he feeds the substance to the prince. In a brief moment, this liquid causes the prince's entire body to be healed and return back to normal. Seeing this, everyone is thrilled. To figure out the effect of the liquid, the prince gets up and walks to a reflective surface. Looking at it, he sees that he is now fully healed, and the horrible burn scar which he hated so much is now gone for good. To clarify, Yuya states that he had made use of a recovery medicine called Cure All Herb to heal the prince. Then, he demand to know what the prince thinks about the effect of the herb. This question shocks everyone as they have clearly seen the extraordinary effect of the herb. When Yuya sees how shocked everyone is, he is reminded that the cure-all herb is very rare and legendarily hard to find. Meanwhile, the king thanks him for using something so rare to treat his son. Hearing this, he assures them that it isn't, letting them know that he has a lot of the herbs growing in his garden at home. Shortly after, the prince laughs loudly. He believes that the fact that his wounds are healed does not mean that he would avoid a death sentence. At that moment, the princess Lexia asks her father what her brother's crime is. In response, he states that it is his attempt on her life. Hearing this, princess Lexia states that she forgives him. While this shocks her father, her brother lets her know that it isn't a simple matter. However, she believes it is since she, as the victim, has forgiven him. Seeing how determined to forgive her brother the princess is, King Arnold reminds her that he also tried to kill him too. 
just as she did. She demands that the king forgives his son too. When the king once again states that it isn't that simple, she lets him know that it is, especially since he was the one being attacked, which gives him the chance to forgive the prince. Seeing the seriousness in his daughter's eyes, the king is forced to pardon the prince. After that, Princess Alexia assures her brother that they can be friends again. Even though the prince's life was spared, his lands were taken as punishment. Later on, the prince thanks Yuya for saving him, and this eventually led to the discussion of King Arnold's reward for him. While the king contemplates, Princess Lexia thinks the most suitable reward for Yuya is marriage to her. This thought is however also shared by Luna. While the two argue about this, the prince suggests a suitable reward to his father. This happens to be the house and land seized from Prince Riger. Furthermore, Yuya is to be given the title Lord Knight. Hearing this, Yuya is shocked to his bones. That night, he is made to sleep in the palace and he feels very exhausted. While Knight and Akatsuki look at him, he falls asleep. In his dream, Yuya is reminded of his encounter with the evil girl, and this scares the hell out of him. The next day, after school, Yuya runs out immediately. He ignores the invitations of his friends, and heads out in a haste. Even when Kaori talks about coming to his house for some tutoring, he doesn't seem interested in this and heads straight home. While running, he is reminded of the prince's narration about being used by the evil girl. He is once again reminded of their first encounter and how she had said she wanted to use the power of the vial. Getting home, Yui dresses up in his warrior clothes and begins to train in the forest. He is accompanied by Knight and Akatsuki who both seem to be training too. He seems determined to fight against the powers of the vial. While beating the girl might be hard for him, he feels Master Yuzagi might know a way to do so. However, he intends to do what he can on his own to be ready. While they train, Knight notices a presence approaching them. When Yuya senses this, he is consciously anticipating an attack. Fortunately, it happened as he expected it. Apparently, the girl had arrived to face him. She is impressed that he escaped the attack. When he realizes that it is the girl he had been training for, he demands to know who she is, seeking to know why she is attacking them. In response, she states that he is a threat and an entity which could interfere with her plans for revenge. Hearing her utter the word revenge, Yuya is left confused as to what she means and what is going on. However, he is determined to defeat her in order to get a detailed explanation. While thinking about it, she launches a surprise attack on him, which he fortunately dodges. Meanwhile, Kaori arrives at Yuya's door. She continues to press the doorbell and gets no response. Just then, she sees that his door is open and decides to go in since she only wants to study with him. Going in, she heads to his backyard, leaving to his garden and then the forest. There, she is reminded of a time when he had told her that there are monsters in the forest. While thinking about this, he hears a loud noise in a distance. This happened to be the noise coming from the intense battle between Yuya and the evil girl. She shoots arrows at him, and this causes Yuya to ask her what he has done to her to warrant a revenge. In response, she claims there is no need for him to know. Then, she fires multiple arrows at him, which he fortunately dodges. After that, Knight tries to attack her, but she avoids him. While still shooting arrows at him, Yuya avoids it as much as he can. Seeing how much of a challenge he is, she intends to finish him off once and for all. To do this, she demands her master's power and channels it into an arrow which she shoots straight at him. In a brief moment, he dodges it and it ends up destroying everything in its path. While trying to avoid her subsequent attack, Yuya hears Kaori calling out his name. He is probably left wondering how she is here at this time. However, he isn't bothered about that now, but is focused on his opponent. Unfortunately, Yuya gets trapped in a position where the girl attempts to finish him off. Just as she shoots the arrow at him, Master Yuzagi arrives and shields him from it. Upon his arrival he apologizes for coming late, revealing that he was doing some little investigation. After that, he calls the girl by her name, Yudi. Hearing this, the girl wonders how he knows her name. In addition to knowing her name, he reveals that she is the successor of the Divine Archer who was slain. This had been the reason why she had been hell-bent on avenging her master. Meanwhile, Master Yuzagi seeks to know if she thinks that is what her master wants. He tries to let her know that her master would never want her to do this, but she doesn't seem interested in hearing what he has to say. Instead, she goes ahead to attack them. Together with Knight, Master Yuzagi delivers a delicate blow that immobilizes her for a moment. However, determined to have her revenge, she channels the power of the vial, making her a vile god, as she intends to attack them. At that moment, Akatsuki arrives, using its power to dampen the effect of the power of the vial, making her weak. This allows Yuya to make her fall asleep for a while. When she eventually wakes up, she is more calm and reasonable. On the other hand, Yuya finally gets the chance to talk to Kaori. 
he tries to tell her about his life in this new world, assuming she would see him differently, but she assures him that she doesn't. Instead, she states that she sees him the same way as she has always seen him from the first day he saved her. This leaves him speechless. If you like this recap, do let me know in the comments and obviously leave your like too. Do not forget to share with your friends and subscribe. Above all, activate your notification bell so you don't miss the next episode when it drops. Until next time, do take care and stay safe. Yeah.